What do you think, Jasper? Could you live in a van like this? I could. She is pretty beautiful. I want to show you something. Yeah. Go for it. Mama. Sorry to move mummy, but that's alright. Now we're talking. Total Look at that. Parental privacy, baby. Travel day. Mm -hmm. A little bit of the iPad. Yes, yeah, that's what I'm doing reading eggs. Oh, school. Yep. He's a good boy. He's a good boy. But it's only for half an hour. Not finished. Oh, only for half an oh, hour. Right. Oh, okay. says the boss man in the back. Okay, Splitter's Farm. Now, we're actually hitched up, ready to go. So Ooh. we're going to rewind a little bit. It was three years ago. It was episode 13 that we were here. If you want to go and check out our first day, then you can actually see, and I'll overlay now, what this place wasn't. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> it was so amazing to come back because when we were here three years ago and Carly and Ash chucked us on the back of the four-wheeler and they drove us around their farm and they said to us, and we're going to put glamping tents here and we're going to have sites here and we're going to do this and do that and they you, mapped it all out you know when someone has a vision and they're, they're explaining it to you and they make it so real that's you can what see they it. that's what they did and now it is real it is goosebump stuff uh so they will feature yeah. in happy campus which is coming up next look we've had a, an amazing time here we checked out over in their powered sites uh we obviously camping off grid over here in the in the the bush camp as they call it i'll let carly actually explain that better mm. but shout out to ash the snake wrangler <laughs> that was good as well a bit of excitement look at him he's beautiful oh wow look at that isn't he carpet. beautiful yep. look Pretty at those markings exactly. coastal carpet pipes and this one's jasper he's gonna go and let him go do you want to come for drive and let him go <gasps> yeah come on Let's do it. We go right up the back far bush and we let them go. Yeah. It is just a beautiful farm stay with a difference where you're actually part of making a difference mm. to the how many 400 rescue animals that they have on this farm. Let's let Carly That's tell you a lot you a of mouths more. to feed. It's incredible what these guys have created and what they're doing. If you love animals, you love the fresh air, the country, this is the place to come. Yeah. Oh, and if you're after like a glamping experience, this is off the charts amazing what they have created. It is. I reckon this is the benchmark for, for glamping. Let's put it that way. Yep. Incredible. All right. Enjoy.
Thank you. I'm gonna love this. Wow. Back in my day. <laughs> <laughs> wow, well, Luna is pretty beautiful, isn't she? She sure is. She mate. really is beautiful. Hey, yeah. old school clock. An old school clock. What do you think, Jasper? Could you live in a van like this? I could. She is pretty beautiful. I want to show you something. Yeah, go for it. Mama. Sorry to move mummy, but it's alright. Now we're talking, Tote look at that. Parental privacy, baby. Mm -hmm. Hang on. Windy night. There, there. Parents delight. Take you to the lunar and back, eh? Hey, guys, look. Look what else is here. Ta da! A tall little fridge. Don't let on the cold air out. So you're going to hop in there. How gorgeous is this? I love this. Mum, so you don't have Fantastic. She's got a microphone. It's good if you don't have your own van, you can just come and stay in one of these. Do you know what it reminds me of? My auntie Lucy's house. All of this sort of stuff, real yeah. vintage style, yeah. same sort of cupboards, and used to go there as kids and visit her all the time. I love that house. She had a pink bathroom, a pink toilet. I'm not look sure. Look at that, Jasper, they've even got a TV, hey? Yep. Yeah. Oh, and look, and there's a roof that pops up. Pop-up roof? Seriously? Wow! Yeah. Welcome to Slitter's Farm. My name's Farmer Carly. Uh, we've got 160 acres here in Bundaberg, Queensland, 60 of which makes up the farm itself, 100 acres of pristine bushland and a beautiful creek surrounding our property called Splitters Creek. We are essentially an animal sanctuary for over 400 rescued animals, which have come to us for a number of different reasons. We get the neglected, the abused, uh, council confiscated animals, but a majority of the animals have come to us because of the Queensland drought. And uh, we've taken them in over the past five years, given them a loving home and created a circular economy through our day trippers who now come out to feed the animals which pays for the food and vet bills. So that's what we do. We're also a running and working cattle farm. So people can come and stay on site, make a difference, see how the challenges of, of farm life, but also get involved in the tasks. So clipping feet, branding cattle, uh, worming, vaccinating, all sorts of stuff. So uh, it's an all round experience. My husband and I have five kids, we're a blended family. We were living in town, someone came to our house at a garage sale and offered to buy it out from under us. So we essentially just wanted a rural property where we could raise our kids with fresh air and a little dirt under their fingernails. We have a massive love for animals as well. 
My very first job was picking up eggs at a battery hen farm as a 13 year old, which was a pretty awful experience to see the treatment of farm animals. So uh, I think that's where our love and want for a better life for farm animals and a more sustainable farm environment came from. So when you come to Splitters, we really treat our guests as an extension of our family. We break bread with them every Friday night, uh, we make Zampa, we get involved in looking after the animals, we'll take them on tours of the farm. There's lots of things you can do that are a bit nostalgic, so you know, having just a campfire under the stars with marshmallows, chatting with friends, you can hire go-karts, we also uh, can explore the creek via kayak or canoe, and paddle boats on the dam, so dam swimming, sitting by a fire, cooking Zampa and breaking bread with friends, what's, what's better than that? We started doing tours in 2019, so day trippers would come out and feed the animals. But I think there was an educational aspect missing that would allow people, if they stayed longer on the farm, to get why we were bottle feeding animals and things like that, the effects of drought and climate change and global warming. So we essentially went back and said, look, we would really like to have people stay on the farm, see what it's like to run the farm. And now we've got everything from campers delivering calves, we've got people getting involved in all sorts of things, collecting the eggs, and just that sense of discovery that comes with kids being on a farm and, and the smells and the sounds, and, and it really is a magical place. What we've now created is a few different ranges of accommodation. We've got uh, camping, non-powered and powered. We've got our mid-range accommodation offers with our retro glampers, which are like the coolest thing ever. And we also have our high-end glamping experience, which is second to none. We've got world-class facilities, beautiful, clean, modern amenities, a family room that caters for people with large families so they can shower their kids in one place without, you know, yelling at the kids while you're in the shower, hey, stop looking under those stalls or don't talk to strangers. So it's really where you can just lock them in, get them all showered, get back to the important stuff like, you know, drinking the beer at the end of the day. But the other thing is uh, disability access and just the, the animal therapy side of things that comes with being around animals um, for the elderly, for the sick, for the mentally ill. Uh, there's a lot to be said for having facilities that suit that purpose as well because there is such a benefit being around animals. They know when, when people need that extra love and care, as do they. Our camp kitchen, it's awesome. We, we love our camp kitchen. We knock out pizzas most weekends. It's an area where people can collectively gather cook a meal in an awesome place. Uh, we've got a sunset deck that has beautiful views of the, the sunsets in the afternoon over the farm. And yeah, that's generally where we do a meet and greet every afternoon. I, I like to try and get out and meet every single guest and explain the story behind the farm and how they contribute to it by staying here. So one of the best experiences we get told about is our outdoor cinema. We do this every Saturday night and you'll see the animals come around, the geese all kind of waddle down in a line and, and sit at the back of the cinema area behind all the guests watching the movies under the stars. I mean, where else can you get that kind of experience? It's, it's amazing, it's life changing and it's just generally it's fun, it's farm fun. Is Babe one of the most popular? <laughs> <laughs> Babe and Charlotte's Web are the most popular films, I think. So it's pretty awesome. The plans for Splitters, they're pretty big. We, we want to put eight more glamping tents in that face the bushland that give us a larger accommodation offering in this region, which we, we really suffer with. We want to put a bigger office in. We're finally moving out of the shed this year. That's probably the biggest thing for us, getting out of the shed and actually having a house for our five kids and, and family of seven. That'll be awesome. But... For the guests, we really want to expand the accommodation offering. We're expanding the facilities here. We want to put in a conference centre for weddings and events, a cafe, 
coffee, which every camper needs, let's face it. <laughs> and in general, just create a, a one-stop shop. And exciting news, we are planning to put a pool in that suits the natural surrounds so you can go swimming all year round. The biggest thing about splitters is just being able to unplug, unwind, relax, reconnect with nature, our animals and each other. And that's pretty simple stuff and sometimes it's hard to get but in here it comes in spades. Hey, we are on our way to wash both rigs. We are in Harvey Bay. We've dropped our little rug rat, Jasper Rooney, <laughs> off to the off. grandparents. Jeez, they could spend some money on the old potholes here, <laughs> couldn't they? Sort those out. Anyway, uh, but would you believe it? It's raining. Yeah, pretty funny. Although it doesn't look like it's set in, so. No, look, when you. And you're going to wash the vehicle, it's going to get wet anyway. Yeah. But we know it's time for a good wash and we've been waiting to come to this particular bay. Yeah. Uh, a rookie mistake would be ring ahead, right? Yeah, look, I actually <laughs> Don't ring have ahead, tried. ring ahead. I've tried and nobody's answering the phone. They do have a boat and caravan wash bay here, which is why we're here. Yeah. I just wanted to double check the clearance. But anyway, we are about to find that out. Um, we've not pulled through a car wash like this before we've always just done it ourselves wherever we are and that's yeah. certainly easy enough but we thought well this one is here and they've got an underbody wash which i guess is kind of cool for your boat and caravan i don't know anyway we're going to get the wash. we're going to give it a good scrub excellent and then of course maintenance 101 we think whether you are grey nomad green nomad uh, both uh, you know, yeah. new, newbie or old B, you will get something out of old this bee. segment. Old B. It's and a word bee. now, people. Uh, because we think we're going to get something out of oh, this. Totally. You know, RV maintenance, there's yeah. always, 
tips and tricks and if you can get it off uh, you know an expert someone who's worked in the industry yeah. and can give us some advice that's going to be great that will be with Darren yeah awesome and I think we'll also do a little bit of uh, cleaning tips for inside the van as great. well we've noticed after our off-grid camping in the various locations over the last month or so the inside of the van particularly the screens and the vents and all of that sort of stuff yeah. needs a little bit of TLC so we should cover that as well fantastic all right cleaning love it <laughs> Let's do I it! Like Oh my god, precision. Yep, you're good, you're amazing. Yep, you're good, you're amazing. Yep, you're good, you're amazing. You're amazing. You're amazing. Look at that. She hasn't looked that clean in a while. So good. That made it easy. Fuel stop United 24 right next to the car wash. Okay, 3.1 metre clearance, our van, 3.1 metres. So there's actually another two or 300 mil above that, but enter at your own risk. It was good for us to check. Uh, we tried to ring ahead, and that would be what we would suggest at any of these places. Look, we rang and rang, and we couldn't get a response, but we can vouch for it. It was fantastic. Uh, as a price point, it was $15 was the most amount of time you could hit in one transaction, and that was for 26 minutes. Uh, we did two of those, uh, so that's 52 minutes, $30. And then on the vehicle, we did an $8, which gave us 16 minutes. So there might be a little bit of a tip for you. Maybe do $8 amounts because it works out better value than it does for the $15 amount. I don't know who did the sums over there, but that's what we found. So all up, let's see, what's that? One hour and eight minutes total to watch both vehicles for $38. That's pretty good, isn't it? I think it's great. And then fill up with fuel over here, $1.99.5. At least we're not pipping $2, we've got under that, but there it is, it is what it is. We've got about an hour and a half to two hours easy drive day to Ganalda to hang a to see Darren, who is our maintenance expert for the zone. And we're gonna pick up Jasperini, we can't forget him, right? See you there.
Love you guys. Thank you. Love you, Granddad. Love you, Granny. Ah, I'm taking a photo of you taking a photo of me. Okay. Bye, guys. Bye. Bye. Wow, well, that was fun. Isn't that a picture perfect sight? <laughs> We're at Lake Baramba. That is going to be coming up in a couple of weeks' time. Mm. We're going to feature this property and tell you all about it. Part of the Bajelki Peterson Dam, and really, this is a water lover's paradise, whether you're a fisherman, a water skier, a jet skier. It's amazing. It's a really beautiful environment. Mm. We've had a bit of crazy weather, though, haven't we? It has been. And uh, to be honest, there's been a lot of bugs as well. So. Oh, there has. And wind. Yeah playing havoc with my eyes. Anyway, as you just saw, we've come from Bundaberg. We've had some crazy driving experience. That weather, the rain was so heavy and it made us think, you know, there are things that are in your control and things that are out of your control. Like the dust storm last week where, you know, you just basically have to remember to drive to conditions yep. um, and really just try and be in control of your own training, your own education. If there's yeah. extra stuff you can do to make your experience safer, then we would recommend it. Yeah, and staying calm as much as possible. I mean, I know, Paul, I could hear it in your voice and I could see how much you were gripping the steering wheel in that dust storm as mm. well. So, But trying to remain calm, I think, especially when you've got little people in the car, yeah. is a really good tip. Absolutely. Murphy's Law though, we spent like what an hour and a half almost washing the caravan and the truck and then just had more rain than we've had in weeks in like the space of a couple of hours. Crazy. Um, All right. Now we mentioned RV Maintenance 101. We did have a couple of days there where we had to wait for that weather to then film it. So we want to bring that to you as a standalone episode next week at Hangarow with Darren Hocking who really is awesome. He yeah. was so fantastic, but it, it did make us realize that the information that he had to share was worth its own actual episode. So that'll be next week. Well, even for us, you know, after three and a half years of full-time travel, we picked up so much stuff and stuff that we were like, oh, okay, we probably need to start doing that more We regularly. need to, yeah, lift our yeah. game on our actual delivery on a scheduled you know maintenance plan that we can do yeah. exactly yeah. okay now we're going to finish up though by taking you back to the Bundaberg region to one of our all-time it's in our top three yeah. water-based experiences it is the Lady Musgrave experience mm -hmm. it is breathtakingly beautiful it is literally like being on set with David Attenborough mm -hmm. oh Jasper was so little it was like in our first couple of months on the road so we were still settling into this lifestyle and to be able to go out and experience mm. something like this that is in our own backyard. You know, it's just off the coast and It's so not the pristine. okay barrier <laughs> reef. It's the great barrier <laughs> reef. Yep. Isn't it? And it's exactly that. You'll love it. But for now, we'll say cheerio. Look after yourself and look after your family. And happy trails. See you next week. Bye, guys. There, straight ahead. Straight ahead. Lady Musgrave, here we come.
to Lady Musgrave Island. You have literally just stepped into a David Attenborough documentary. Enjoying the island walking to a cake. This is amazing. Yeah. This island is incredible, isn't it? It is. We're <laughs> learning not only about the hi, the incredible bird life, uh, the vegetation, the way this uh, cave was actually formed is quite incredible. We've seen reef shark. There's turtle tracks everywhere because all the turtles are uh, nesting at the moment, and it's super hot. It's super hot. Uh, but incredible. It is incredible and it is a complete green zone, which means that the island and everything on it and around it is protected. It it's is. It's just amazing and it is World Heritage listed. Absolutely beautiful. I don't think uh, either of us have seen an island quite like this. It's incredibly unique. Mm -hmm. It's hard to say goodbye. Lady Musgrave Island, what an incredible experience. Oh, we have just had the best day out here on the Southern Great Barrier Reef. We have participated in so many activities that are inclusive on this day tour out here to Lady Musgrave Island. Mm. We did a walking tour of the island itself, got up close with the abundance of bird life on the island, saw the turtle tracks. We did snorkeling. Oh, oh. my gosh. <laughs> and I know even to see, you know, reef sharks, the ones that don't want to eat humans, <laughs> that was fantastic. Jasper snorkeling, full snorkeling this time. Yep. Wow. First time ever. And being able to see those fish and just the excitement that he had of actually experiencing snorkeling in crystal clear 24 degree waters. I mean, amazing. We even got to see some beautiful turtles swimming around uh, from the boat. Which Tick was, for you yes, on your bucket list. Definitely. And we got to go out on the glass bottom boat as well, which again was such a fantastic experience. Super family friendly, especially if you don't want to get wet. It's mm. a really great one to experience the reef. Look, it, it's a premium ticket if you are on a budget traveling around Australia like we are, but it is a must do uh, to head out here on such a beautiful vessel. Um, you know, once you've paid for your ticket, everything's included. There are uh, add-ons like diving uh, I mean to dive on the Great Barrier Reef wow what a magical experience but truly geared for families and a wonderful wonderful experience for watching please do like subscribe and share our channel and if you'd like more information on full-time rv travel and living visit our website thefeelgoodfamily.com there you'll find loads of free resources our weekly podcast caravan cooking recipes our monthly go rv magazine articles and much more we look forward to seeing you next week 
take care of yourself and your family and happy trails. Like me. Don't you reckon his hair's a little bit? No woman, no cry. Yeah. Eh, eh. No veggies, no cry. Oh, so I wonder what's in there. A hope chest. Is that what they call that? Hey! <laughs> how, how fancy is this? Super duper fancy, I would say. Do you want to go in Venus? Venus was a Oh my gosh, you are a crazy chicken. Holy dolly. <laughs>